so case study three. Let us read the question very mindfully. An organization conducted by Chris under two different categories, boys and girls. Totally, there are 250 participants. Among all of them, finally, three from category one, that means three from boys, and two from category two, means two from girls, were selected for the final race. Ravi for two set A and B with participants for his college project. Let B is the set B1, B2, boy 1, boy 2, boy 3. G is set G1, G2, G3, where B represents the set of selected boys and G represents the set of girls for the final race. Now, Ravi decides to explore these sets for various types of relations and functions. So questions are, Ravi wishes to form all the relations from B to G. How many such relations are possible? Options are 2 to the power 6, 2 to the power 5, 0 to the power 3. So B has how many, B has how many elements? B has three elements because boy 1, boy 2, boy 3. G has two elements, girl 1, girl 2. Then the number of relation is, we know, 2 to the power 3 multiplies by 2. We have already discussed, so it will be 2 to the power 6. So 2 to the power 6 means A is answer of this question. Now coming to question number 2. Let R be, the relation is defined from set B to B. Set B to B. B has how many elements? It was B1, B2, B3. So the relation is from B to B and the relation is all XY. XY are the students of same sex. That means all are boys. Then the relation R is, it is equivalence relation, reflexive relation, reflexive and symmetric, but not transitive, reflexive and transitive, but not symmetric. So uh, when all are same sex, so we can write B1, B1 belongs to relation because any boy has the it is of same sex as your same. So it will be B1, B2 belongs to uh, same. So R is reflexive. Relation is reflexive. Because if I say boy 1, boy 2, they are of same sex. Similarly, B1, B2, if this belongs to R, will make a pair. They have same sex. So this implies that B2, B1 also belongs to relation. So this is symmetric. Now coming to transitive, B1, B2 belongs to R. B2, B3 belongs to R. This implies that B1, B3 also belongs to R because they are of same sex. B1, B3 have same sex. So it will be transitive. So the relation is reflexive, symmetric, transitive. So it is a equivalence relation. Coming to question number three. Rabbi wants to know among these relations, how many functions can be possible from B to G? B has how many elements? B has your three elements. G has your two elements. So number of functions is possible. It is G to the power, the number of elements in B. So it will be two to the power three. So D is answer for this question. Now coming to fourth one. Now the relation is defined from B to G. Then the pair are B1, G1, B2, G, G2, B3, G1. Then R is what? It is the options are injective, surjective, neither surjective, nor injective, surjective, and injective. That means, let me uh, draw the ray one figure, B1, 
your B2 and B3 and your G1 and G2. So B1 is imaged with G1 and B2 is G2 and B3 again with G1. So this is many one function. It is, it is many one function. It is also your, mm, so when it is many one function, it will be sur subjective. Uh, it is not injective function because injective means one one. So it is not injective. Now coming to surjective, no element is left in your set G. So it will be surjective function. So B is correct answer for this. Now coming to five. Ravi wants to find number of injective function from B to G. How many numbers of injective functions are possible? So number of Injective function are zero when set G has less number of elements than set B. Set G has set B. So here B has three number of elements, G has two number of elements, so number of injective function will be zero. So A is a correct answer for this question. Now coming to case study four. Students of grade 9 plan to plant saplings along the straight lines parallel to each other to one side of the playground, ensuring that they had enough play area. Let us assume that the planted, they planted one of the rows of the sapling along the line y is equal to x minus 4. It will be the set of all lines which are parallel to the ground on the ground and R is relation on the set of lines. R is relation defined on set of lines. Now, following this, you have to follow the information. You have to answer the questions. What is it? Let me write, find the whole answer. Question number one is, lay the relation R be defined by L1, L2. L1, L2 means they are the straight lines, where L1 is parallel to L2. This is the relation where L1, L2 both belongs to L, L means set of lines. Then R is equivalence, only reflexive, not reflexive, symmetric dot, not transitive. Now see the set of lines, L1, L2, and L3. Now we are talking about the parallel lines. So L1 is parallel to L1. It is true or false? It is true. So L1, L1 belongs to relation. So it is a reflexive relation. It is reflexive. Then coming to symmetric. How to test symmetric? If L1 line is parallel to L2, does it mean that L2 is parallel to L1? Yes. So whenever L1, L2 parallel, it belongs to R, this implies that L2, L1 also parallel belongs to R. So it will be symmetric. So this is reflexive and symmetric. Then coming to transitive. L1 is parallel to L2. L if L2 is parallel to L3, then is it true that L1 is parallel to L3? Yes. So this is transitive. So when it is reflexive, symmetric, transitive, we call it equivalence relation. So equivalence is correct. Now coming to question number two. Same question, set of lines. The definition is L1 is perpendicular to L2. L1, L2, taking the relation. L1 is perpendicular to L2. Which one of these is following is true? 
LR is symmetric, but neither reflexive nor transitive. R is reflexive and transitive, not symmetric. R is reflexive, neither symmetric nor transitive. R is equivalence relation. Now see the line perpendicular. L1, is it perpendicular to L1? No. Same line cannot be perpendicular to itself. So not reflexive. Now coming to if L1 is perpendicular to L2, does it mean that L2 is perpendicular to L1? Yes. So it is symmetric. Now coming to if L1 is perpendicular to L2, L2 is perpendicular to L3, then does it mean that L1 is perpendicular to L3? No, it is false. Let us see a diagram that this is L1. This is perpendicular to L2. L2 is perpendicular to L3. Then what about L1, L3? They are not perpendicular. So it is not transitive. Not transitive. So which statement will be true? It is only symmetric. It is only symmetric. Neither reflexive nor transitive. So A is correct option. Part 3. The function f is defined from r to r, real number to real number, real number to real number. fx is equal to x minus 4 is, it is a bijective function, surjective but not injective, injective but not surjective, neither surjective nor injective. So, this is a linear function, y is x minus 4 and what is the meaning of bijective which is both surjective 1, 1 and On two. Injective is one one and subjective is on two. So both one one on two that is your bijective function. So this linear equation y is equal to x minus four, it is a one one on two function. One one on two. But the quadratic function they are not one one on two. Linear functional. 1, 1, 1, 2. So it will be a bijective function. You can test, but there is no, in the examination, there is no time to prove it is 1, 1 or 1, 2. So uh, please keep in mind linear functions, y is equal to some 2x plus 3, 2x minus 4. This is always 1, 1, 1, 2 function. Now coming to part 4. Part 4 and part 5. Let f function is defined from real number to real number. fx is equal to x minus 4. Then the range of fx, that, that means if y is equal to x minus 4 and x and y both are real number. x is a real number. Real number means it may be rational, it may be irrational. So y may be rational, may be irrational. So y will be a real number. So range means the value of y. So when I'm putting in x, I may be putting in real number, rational, maybe irrational, maybe natural, maybe whole number. So whenever I'm putting anything, x minus 4, it will be the values according to it. So y is always a real number. Next coming to 5. L1, L2, that means again the set of lines. L1 is parallel to L2 and y is equal to x minus 4. Which of the following is taken as L2? That means L2 means you have to select another line whose equation will be parallel to this. That means this line y is equal to x minus 4 I will get a line which is parallel to this. That means it will have the same slope. Or you know that parallel means if a1x plus b1y is equal to c1, then a2x plus b2y is equal to c2. When they are parallel, a1 by a2 is equal to b1 by b2 is not equal to c1 by c2. So keep your coefficient of x and y which are proportional to this. So this line is y minus x is equal to minus 4 or 
x minus y is equal to 4. Then select which of this line is parallel to this or the coefficients will be proportional. Certainly this will not be the answer because here it is a negative. This will not be answer, here is a negative. Now check A and B. So here the coefficient of x and y are same. So certainly this will be the answer because here the coefficients are different. So 2x minus 2y plus 5 is equal to 0. So they, they are proportional. So A will be the answer of this question. Now coming to case study 5. Raji visited the exhibition along with the family. The exhibition had a huge swing which attracted many children. Raji found that the swing traced a path of parabola y is equal to x square. Answer the following question using this above information. Now you answer the questions. The question is about y is equal to x square is a parabola. Now the questions are asked in this way. First question is if function is defined from r to r, fx is equal to x square is neither surjective nor injective, surjective, injective, bijective. So this is a quadratic function. As I told, quadratic function is neither one one. Why? Because minus one square is one. One square is also one. I'm giving a very simple example. So minus one is minus one, one is a pair, one and one is a pair. So it is never one one function. It will be many one function. Many one function means you're not injective, but option is not there. Now coming to surjective function. Surjective function means if we'll see this, this first set is the real number, second set is also real number, and we are defining fx is equal to x square. That means it will be subjective if all the elements have the pre-image in it. But you will take minus one, it is no pre-image in your R. That means there is nothing, no uh, real number whose square is equal to minus one. So it has no pre-image, minus one, minus two, minus three has no pre-image. So it is not surjective function. So it is not surjective, not injective, not one, one, not on two. So it will be neither surjective nor injective. Similarly, same function, it is defined from n to n, natural number to natural number. Natural number to natural number, one, two, three, four, so on. And here also one, two, three, four, so on. So we'll say one s square one, two s square four, three s square nine. That means it is one one. It has the image here. And the only single image. But if we note this two has no pre-image. Two has two is not square of anything because we are defined from natural number two natural number. So when 2, 3, 5, 6, these elements are left in the natural number who have no square root in natural number. So they are not, not subjective, not subjective function. So it is injective, but not subjective. Now go for the options. So it will be injective function, answer is C. Now coming to question number three. F is here no natural number, nothing is there, only the elements are there. That means one, two, three, these are there. Here one, four, nine, same real, Function is defined fx is equal to x square. The, option, the question is this function is bijective, surjective, not injective, injective, but surjective, neither surjective nor injective. So 1, 1 is square 1, 2 is 4, 3 is 9. 
4 has 16. That means it is 1 1 function. 1 1 means it is injective. Now coming to subjective, here 2 3 are not there. All squares are there. So each has a premise in your set A. So it will be surjective function. No element is left which is not paired, which is paired. So it will be a bijective function. Coming to four. Let now the function is defined from natural number to real number. That means x is natural number and this is your r. And the function is fx equal to x square. So the question is, what will the range of function among the following is whether 1, 4, 9, 16, 1, 4, 8, 9, 10, 1, 4, 9, 15, 16, 1, 4, 8, 16. So this is very easy. 1 square is 1, 2 square is 4, 3 square is 9, 4 square is 16. So A will be the answer. Question number 5. Now the function is defined from z to z. What is z? z is your integers. Here integer to integer, same function fx would x square. It is neither injective nor subjective, injective, subjective, bijective. So when I'm writing in integers, that means negative are also there, positive are also there, here also, minus. 2 minus 1, 0, 1, 2, natural, yeah. integer to integer. Same function f is equal to x square. Now, what type of function it will be? Will it be bijective function? No, because these have no pre image. They have no pre image. So it is not surjective. Coming to injective, see, minus 1 square is 1. Minus 1 square is 1. 1 square is also 1. So minus 1 square 1. 1 square is also 1. That means this will be many 1 function. Many 1 means it will be not injective. So it is neither injective nor surjective. So A is answer. So thank you. I hope you will learn five questions together. So thank you for watching. Thank you for subscribing my channel. Thank you for liking my video. If you have not subscribed, please subscribe. If you have not liked, please like. So very Soon we will meet another video.